back to the comedians you don't give a shit about. Uh, <laughs> literally, people are talking, haven't even said a goddamn word. Back to your reg regularly scheduled programming. You saw Leslie, she's the best. I'm gonna tell your coworkers you saw her, now it's our turn. So. <laughs> this is the part of the show where you're kind of doing me a favor. You got your show, so. Yeah, she's great. I feel like such a square following Leslie because she was wearing a shirt that said Ice Cube and I have on fucking elbow pads. <laughs> Literally, fucking, I wore my whitest outfit, but looking like a camp counselor. I look like Lenny Marcus's nephew. That's what I look like. <laughs> the good news is, me and Leslie have different material. Uh, so, no one saw me, took the stage, and was like, deja vu, here we go again. <laughs> Didn't I just see this? Didn't I just see, like, they're clones? What is the difference between the two of them? Here we go. <laughs> a lot of my friends are getting married. And, uh, yeah, I've been invited to six summer weddings. It's kind of, oh, that was visceral. <laughs> yeah, and I agree with you. You know what I hate about wedding invitations? I hate how invitations tell you how you should feel about whether you can attend a wedding or not. Every time they say, joyfully accepts. And then below that, regretfully declines. When you got six summer weddings lined up, you're like, you know what, you can flip those adverbs uh, to regretfully accepts and joyfully declines. Joyfully decline. And every invitation, this is my favorite, refers to a wedding as a celebration of the couple. Poppycock, right? <laughs> we all know weddings are not a celebration. They're just a celebration of the bride. Uh, and then a Comedy Central roast of the groom. Uh, have you listened to the speeches? Every speech by a bride's friend tells her how amazing she looks, how beautiful today is. And every speech by a groom's friend tells the bride what a huge mistake she's making <laughs> by marrying this worthless sack of potatoes. Without, you've seen it. Every speech by a bride's friend is just emotional, powerful, breathes super loudly into the mic. <laughs> Becca? <laughs> You are a national treasure. <laughs> and everything you do glitters with gold. <laughs> and then every speech by a groom's friend is always just like, okay, yo, one time Craig shit his pants at an Arby's. So, uh, 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 we're sure about that? I'm sure you want to make, he's got IBS. Okay. Gonna be spending a lot of money on underwear, just saying. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Every single time, crowd eats it up. I've had women approach me about this joke. They come up to their show, they disagree. They go, you know, that's not true. We roast our friends too, so. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, barely. You ever heard a bridesmaid roast the bride? If she does, the joke is always so nice, light, and delicate. You've seen it. Has the mic. Super proud of herself. Just like. <laughs> um, so we all know Crystal like loves white wine. Um, So, so let's all raise a glass, or as Crystal wishes, two glasses. Oh. <laughs> Meanwhile, dudes are like, yeah, Chris is an unrepentant alcoholic. <laughs> One time we got drunk on 4th of July and a Roman candle hit him in the dick. <laughs> Part of his scrotum burnt off. Proud of you, son. That was his dad. <laughs> it's a real story. I've heard a father tell about his son at a wedding. What? 
What? Him getting hit in the genitals with a firework. You think he would tell a story like that if it happened to his daughter? Yeah, one time Lisa got in the pussy with a bottle rocket, so. Uh, you sure about that? She got a torch scooter, okay? All right, all right. All right. Gonna be spending a lot of money on ointment, just saying, whoa. No, he wouldn't, he wouldn't. And let's be clear, I think weddings should just be a celebration of the bride. You know why? Women do all of the organizing. If a man was the primary organizer of a wedding, it'd be a very different affair. Uh, first off, the invita you know what the invitation would be if a man organized? It would just be a text that day. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> just you no know, prep, just, you, hey man, I'm getting married in 95 minutes. <laughs> Can you be my best man? <laughs> yeah, dude, no freaking problem, man. Where's the wedding at? Every wedding. It's at Buffalo Wild Wings, so. I don't have reservations. I'm not getting married. I know when I do. I know what I'm doing with my invitations. I'm gonna mess with people. I'm gonna address them to the name of the person and put a comma and then put or current resident. Just uh, just uh, uh, what is? I'm not that political person. I try and separate how I feel about a person from how I feel about their politics sometimes. It can be important to do that. Like, in my lifetime, here are my presidential preferences. You can agree or disagree. Here's what they are for me. In my lifetime, Barack Obama is my favorite president. Sure. Who? Wolf whistle Woo! Obama's my favorite president, but George W. Bush is my favorite guy who was president. Uh, very different things. Very di Obama was the most professional. Bush was the most endearing. Obama was like a school librarian who was like, all right, buddy, uh, read your books, study hard, and uh, let's have a good school year. Bush was like a goofy gym teacher who was like, all right, grab a dodgeball, the crotch counts as doubles, so. <laughs> <laughs> Most of my jokes have to do with people getting hit in the nuts. Uh, he's just begging kids. The school took his dodgeballs away. He's like, that's all right. I brought my own from home. <laughs> he was so informal. That's why Bush was hilarious. He was so informal. The best video online of George W. Bush is this. Pope John Paul II is finishing a speech. And in the nome of Padre, el hijo, el Espíritu Santo, God bless. And George W. Bush walks up to the Pope, he's got a hot mic, and he goes, hey, awesome speech, your holiness. <laughs> what? Who the hell talks to the Pope like they're not the goddamn Pope? <laughs> hey, man, that was a badass prayer, dude. Who kicks some ass out there? And then he just wipes Cheeto dust in his white robe and gives him a good hustle at a boy butt slap. My very liberal friends try and get me mad at Bush. They're like, how can you like the guy? What about the housing crisis? And I'm like, yeah. What about the recession? Yeah. What about the Iraq war? And I'm like, yeah, screw that guy. And then I'll see a video online of George W. Bush handing Michelle Obama candy at his own father's funeral. And all I can think is, I can't stay mad at the fella. I can't. George W. Bush is like a golden retriever that tore up the house. Dude fucked everything up. But anytime you see his face, you're just like, who's a good boy? You're not mad, you wanna get my noogie. From Kansas originally, which, uh, you know. <laughs> I feel like the woos are just to be like, sorry you had to follow Leslie. Uh, <laughs> that's a guy being like, that sucks for you. <laughs> but yeah, I'm a lot more aware of racial issues than I used to be because, you know, there's only white people in Kansas, so. <laughs> like, I used to be a person who, if I was called racist, I would do that dumb defense. You've heard it. I'm not racist, some of my friends are black, right? That's the, that's the only thing where to defend yourself, someone will say they're friends with the people they're accused of hurting. Because there can never be a, no, I'm not a pedophile, some of my friends are 12, so. <laughs> should be in the clear. <laughs> Motherfucker! <laughs> First I gotta follow Leslie, then I gotta break the mic on stage. All right, guys, that's my time. Thank you. Dear.